Hey, what's up, everybody? So I had a really good email come in talking about whether it was a good time to shift into Sweet Spot. And no, this is not me hating on Sweet Spot. And I'm going to have a podcast coming out with Tom Bell where we discuss when should you ride Sweet Spot. And I'm going to allude to a little bit of that in this podcast. But I had a rider, we were talking about how he's become much more resilient, much able to, uh, much better at riding long distances and keeping the power up for big gravel events and working on surging over climbs and or i should say not necessarily surging over climbs but riding at vo2 max power up and over climbs to keep his speed up he's definitely a a person that's trying to do like sub nines at leadville doing massive big gravel rides going out and doing six seven hour rides on the weekends so becoming a more resilient rider is a big plus for him and one comment i had made is hey i really think that the vo2 max work the lactate clearance work has been super beneficial and we were talking about how and i want to preface this with i came from the threshold school of training which is now a little bit outdated it was to increase your ftp you ride at ftp which we all know there's now better ways to really work that we all now know that Back when I started training, VO2 max training from a lot of coaches was accomplished by racing. You didn't do that many VO2 max intervals. Now, the other big training piece was doing progressively longer threshold efforts. Not super long, but up to 20 minutes. So maybe you do four by 10, three by 12, three by 15. Three by 20 was really long. And I would say for most riders back in 2012, let's say now, and we've posted a lot about this, doing more intervals that are working on your lactate production and lactate clearance, because really your lactate threshold is how much do you produce minus how much do you clear? And when that equation gets out of whack, that's when you have to ride below threshold, AKA go slower. So This athlete said to me, uh, and I agree with this, there is something to be said. We were talking about lactate tolerance. Really, that's riding an FTP. You're learning mentally and teaching yourself to tolerate lactate. And I do think that has a place. For me, personally, anecdotally, I like to think of it as train the physiology and then train the race specificity, meaning do the over-unders, do the VO2 max, do the other things to build your engine as big as possible. But if I only do over-unders, there's a period where when I put this into practice and go do a 20 minute effort, my body is wanting to ride over threshold and then it's wanting that lower. It's used to that smash, smash, smash a little bit under. Whereas if I do one or two sessions where I'm doing some 10 minute, 20 minute constant power, At FTP or higher, when I go to do a long FTP effort, that's when I perform the best. Or when I go to not even an FTP effort, when I go for like a hill climb KOM that's long, 18 to 25 minutes, I perform the best because then you really want the over-unders in your back pocket as well as the constant pressure on the pedals because to climb the fastest, it's not at 100% FTP. It's, you know, the road gets a little steeper, you go a little bit harder. It evens out your pit pegging right at hundred percent. So he had said, there's also something to be said for learning to tolerate the discomfort of riding at threshold that one produces all of a sudden also tempo starts to feel easier. And then his question that I wanted to address in this podcast is one of the things I've been thinking about is a lot of the physiological cost of the sessions on future rides. How much will a hard threshold day impact training rides later that week and is the benefit worth worth it sorry my screen got really small for a second i.e is the juice worth the squeeze or is it better to go all out for example vo2 max to get max benefit from intensity basically in a polarized fashion going really hard or much easier but it's hard to do vo2 max all the time so there's no easy answer there This is where I can see an argument for sweet spot slash high tempo work. A lot of threshold benefit, but recovery is easier, or at least that is what is often touted. 
maybe it's not hard enough and this is just the easy way out easy way out question mark and i think this highlights a really important point and in a future podcast with tom bell that i just recorded we talk about this a little in more depth when i say because i don't think this is a point when you want to ride sweet spot and i asked tom straight up when would a rider ride sweet spot because when tom was my coach i'm changing things up a little bit moving forward just to well, I'll probably do a podcast on that all totally nothing went wrong. Just it's where I'm at with my training and life and things on my mind. Um, Tom, I don't think ever gave me sweet spot to do. And I never really give athletes sweet spot. Very, very few, but that's a future podcast. So I said to this athlete, I'm with you in the thinking of VO2 max work because VO2 max work is really important. You can also accomplish vo2 max via the slow component because to get max intensity you don't always have to be riding at maximal aerobic power or the vo2 max power or the vo2 max zone aka 110 to 120 percent you could do bouts where as long as your heart rate gets above 90 percent and who knows maybe it's actually 89 percent maybe it's 88 and a half percent but Literature has shown that 90% heart rate max when it's reached and held there or above, you improve your VO2 max or you have training that theoretically will improve your VO2 max. You don't have to be at super hard power though. You could be doing a hard start and then riding at super threshold, 105, 108, 110% FTP, keeping the heart rate elevated there and i do personally find those very beneficial because there are points in time in especially road racing there's an eight minute effort and it's like you're following a move you're trying to break away you're bridging up to a group it's just a very difficult time you are not riding at ftp you are riding above ftp so to his point vo2 max work that you can always do at really hard power could be accomplished this way through the slow component over-unders, which I already had just said why they're so good in terms of climbing and efforts of working on your lactate clearance to improve your FTP, because the better you get at clearing lactate, the longer you can ride at your threshold power. You also, if you're doing a long enough hard start or a long enough over, your heart rate may get up. If you're a little on the fresh side, may get up to that 90% heart rate max and through the slow component again, you can achieve VO2 max work. Now, this is exactly why you don't want to do tempo or sweet spot. Because he's saying, so you can't do this all the time, so maybe I shift down to sweet spot. This is my exact reason not to do it. If you are too tired for the real work of VO2 max or over-unders, and you're dialing it down to sweet spot or high tempo, but you're looking for an intense workout, you're too tired. You need to rest. I think the sweet spot is good for constant pressure on the pedals, training those 2X fibers over a long duration. If you're doing something like Leadville, climbing Grand Fondos with 45 minute climbs, 30 minute climbs, 90 minute climbs. But for most people, and maybe if you're racing a gravel event and you're not trying to stay at the pointy end, but you're trying to have just your solo fastest time, Yes, but I would say tempo or sweet spot. Sweet spot is just much more fatiguing than tempo in my personal opinion and in working with athletes. So back to the point, if you're too tired for the real work, ride in endurance as there are massive gains for that. We've talked about endurance, how it helps your VO2 max, how it's going to help your FTP in the long term. It's a huge piece of the puzzle. So as he said, the squeeze is not worth the juice with sweet spot for this case. And it is just tolerating lactate. So there is that mental benefit, but you don't need to do that. Very, you don't need a block of sweet spot to learn how to tolerate lactate. I've noticed in one to two sessions, my brain flips off I'm like, oh yeah, that's that feeling. Okay, back at it. You can also get that from threshold. So if you're riding super threshold, very similar feeling. Um, you just feel it later in a sweet spot effort. So you have to spend more time at that intensity, which one could claim is 30 minutes of sweet spot. You get the same mental lactate, lactate tolerance as you would from a four by 10 at 102 to 105%, which I would argue is much more beneficial. So with that, 
I think polarized is definitely better versus where I came from in the threshold school. And that does not mean no tempo or no sweet spot or no threshold. That means the percentages of the training. Look at athletes who are claiming to be fully polarized. No one has 0% in the medio range. Going to have a good blog on this coming together. Going to put some together some good guides and trying to figure out how I want to release those and getting together some more podcasts. If you listen to this whole podcast, leave us a review, please. Five stars on Apple or Spotify. That's all we ask. We're not charging you a thing. Maybe we'll start charging. Uh, got some more quick hitters and hit us up on TikTok. See ya.